Hello, this is Ron Mertens from OLED Info, a web publication and service provider to the OLED industry. This presentation will provide an introduction to the OLED lighting market. We're going to start with a short introduction to the OLED lighting technology and see how OLED lighting compares against the competition. We'll see the promise of OLED lighting and see what's on the market today and who are the major players. And finally, we're going to see some cool OLED lamps. So let's begin. An OLED, or an organic light emitting diode, is made from organic carbon-based materials that emit light when electricity is applied. OLEDs can be used to make both displays and lighting panels. An OLED light bulb is made from a thin film of material coating a glass or a plastic substrate. OLEDs can create large area lighting panels and it is a solid state technology. It's efficient and long lasting. We'll discuss this later on. One of the most exciting features of OLED panels is that they can be made flexible. This unlocks all sorts of design ideas that use curved, bendable, and eventually even foldable or stretchable panels. OLEDs emit beautiful, soft, diffused light, which is very close to natural light. OLEDs can emit a wide spectrum of light, and some OLED panels are actually color tunable, so you can change the light's color whenever you want. At evening time, for example, you can have a light that is similar to a sunset. OLED panels look great when turned off. They can be made with a mirror finish or a matte finish or even be transparent. LEDs and fluorescent tubes are usually too bright to look at, but that's not the case with OLEDs. And this is actually a very major advantage to OLED panels because you do not have to hide the light source behind the shade or use it indirectly like you do with LEDs most of the time anyway. OLEDs can also be placed close to the user, and this means that OLED lamps can be very efficient and even cost-effective, eventually. So OLEDs have a lot of promise, but the technology is still in the very early stage. Well, there's been a lot of progress in past years, and several companies are already producing panels commercially, OLEDs are still very expensive, and massive investments will be required to lower the prices to a point where OLEDs can actually compete with fluorescent or LEDs. As of today, there are three major lighting technologies in the market. The old incandescent lamps that we all know emit great light, but are very wasteful and only last for about a thousand hours. This technology is being phased out and several countries already ban sales of those lamps. Fluorescent and compact fluorescent lamps are much more efficient and they last longer, while still being rather cheap. The main problem with CFLs and fluorescent lights is that they include mercury, which is a dangerous metal, which is very difficult to dispose of. Another problem with fluorescent lighting is the low light quality. LEDs are slowly becoming a more commonplace lighting technology. These bright solid state devices are very efficient and last for a long time. LEDs are more expensive than fluorescent lights and they enable a point light source which is very bright. Most people do not like LED lighting, mostly due to the harsh bright light. And then we have OLEDs. OLEDs enable beautiful and elegant area light emitting panels. They are efficient, but not as efficient as LEDs, and they last long time, but not as long as LEDs. Currently, these OLED panels are very expensive, and this limits the use of this technology to premium high-end installations. OLEDs can enable very efficient lighting devices. It is expected that within a few years, OLEDs will reach an efficiency of 150 lumens per watt. Lifetime, which is measured in the number of hours till brightness falls to 70% of the original brightness, will probably go over 100,000 hours, while the bright panels will achieve a high coloring index, or CRI. OLEDs can be deposited on flexible substrates, such as plastic, metal, or flexible glass. Flexible OLEDs can be curved, bendable, or even foldable and stretchable. There are already some flexible OLED panels available in the market today. OLEDs are transparent in nature, and transparent OLED lighting panels can be embedded in windows, car windshields, and even combined with transparent solar cells, so they can emit light during the night and generate electricity during the day. To summarize, OLEDs enable highly decorative, pleasant, and efficient lighting devices. You can see that they also wrote cheap in there, and yes, this is no mistake. While OLEDs today are very expensive, next-generation deposition technologies, which probably be based on roll-to-roll -roll printing, may enable OLED devices to be made at very low cost and in very large volumes. 
As you can see, today there are over 10 companies that produce OLED lighting panels commercially. The OLED panels today are mostly used in high-end retail installations, museums and premium home luminaires. These take advantage of the beautiful light and good looks of the OLED panels. Most OLEDs today are rectangular or square, with sizes ranging from 5 by 5 cm to 10 by 10 cm. The largest OLED on the market is a 32 by 32 cm panel made by LG Chem. Both LG and Konica Minolta already produce flexible OLED panels, which can be curved. Transparent OLEDs are also on the market. As we said before, even though there are several producers, the production capacity is still very limited. And this also means that prices are still very high. It is estimated that the OLED lighting market generated less than $100 million in revenues in 2014, and this will probably be true for 2015 as well. Production volume is low, and total production will probably be less than a million panels in 2015. The future of the OLED lighting technology is still unclear. The biggest problem with OLEDs today is the high price, and in order to bring this price down, a mass production fabrication plant is required. This means a massive investment, and it's not clear whether anyone will commit to such a project, with the possible exception of Konica Minolta and LG, which we will discuss later. Several market research companies are covering the OLED lighting market, but their forecasts vary widely. Some, such as UBI, sees the market growing quickly and OLEDs closing the price and performance gap with LEDs in the near future. You can see this in the chart below. Some analysts, such as IHS, say that the market will never really take off, and OLED lighting will remain a small niche. LG Chem is one of the clear leaders in OLED lighting. The company produces a wide variety of panels, and all of their panels are high-performance ones. They are efficient and long-lasting. LG offers the world's largest OLED at 32 by 32 centimeters. This is expensive though. The last we heard from LG, it costs $680. LG also offers flexible OLEDs. Currently, they use flexible glass, but they have also completed development of plastic-based panels, which will be bendable. LG aims to start producing these truly flexible OLEDs, as they call them, in the summer of 2015, and they will cost $250 per panel at launch. LG Chem recently finished a large installation at Seoul's National University. The university bought over 500 OLED desk lamps, each one with two OLED panels. LG also provides its panels to Acuity brands. The US-based lighting designer recently started offering OLEDs at Home Depot, and these are probably the cheapest OLEDs ever, a 299 for the five-piece OLED lamp called the Chalina. In 2015, LG announced plans to build the Generation 5 mass production fab. This $185 million production line is scheduled for 2017, and it, it will dramatically increase LG's capacity and lower production costs. Some estimate that production costs will drop by 90%. Konica Minolta has been researching OLEDs for a long time, and currently holds the world record for the most efficient OLED device at 139 lumens per watt. Konica has embarked on the most ambitious OLED lighting project ever and invested $100 million in a wall-to-wall -wall flexible OLED fab, which is the world's first mass production OLED facility. The new fab will be able to produce around 1 million panels in a month. These panels will be flexible and color tunable. Konica has begun pilot production in early 2015, but it seems that this fab is more difficult to construct than first estimated, the company did already ship 15,000 flexible OLED panels to a Japanese tulip festival. This is the world's largest OLED installation by far. Konica did not yet reveal the actual specification and prices of their OLEDs. Philips is one of the three largest OLED players and it focuses on functional high brightness panels. The company produces a single lighting panel, the LumiBlade FL300 Bright. This glass-based Square OLED offers up to 300 lumens at 50 lumens per watt. Philips considered this panel to be a standard product and not a sample or technology demonstration panel anymore, and offers it in the company's lighting web store. The price is 136 euro per panel, but it drops rapidly if you buy more than one. For example, if you buy 40 panels, each will cost only 60 euros. Philips has been pushing its OLEDs into the automotive market, which is considered by many to be the first market that will adopt OLEDs in a commercial way. Philips has been demonstrating OLED lighting together with Audi and BMW. 
In early 2015, Philips announced its intention to sell the OLED business unit. And in April, OLEDWORKS, a US-based OLED developer, announced it will buy the key assets of this unit. OLEDWORKS is a small developer and producer established a few years ago by ex-Kodak employees. And it was actually a surprise to hear that this company won the bid for Philips OLED unit. Unlike LG Chem and Konica Minolta, Philips has a large LED-based business, and it seems that it is not fully heartedly behind OLEDs. This is probably what led to the OLED sale decision, and perhaps the OLED lighting technology and production fab will be better off in an OLED-focused company, such as OLEDWORKS. Osram is Siemens' lighting unit, and the German company has been developing OLEDs for a long time. Back in 2009, it was the first company to actually offer commercial OLED lamps. Osram's OLEDs are branded as Aubert's panels, and have been in the market for some years, but it seems that Osram is somewhat in the sidelines in the past year or two, and they did not update their OLEDs for quite a while. Osram is focused on the automotive market. And the company estimates that we will see the first commercial car with OLED lighting by 2016. And this view is also shared by BMW, by the way. Now we're going to check some cool sample OLED luminous. The first is Acuity Brand's Duet SSL 2000 prototype, which uses both LEDs and OLED panels together. The next one is the Chalina, which is sold via Home Depot for $2,099. It uses five small square panels made by LG Chem. I personally have this lamp sent to me by Acuity, and I can honestly say that it is quite beautiful. Next we have an older chandelier family released in 2014, again using LG Chem's panels. This one is the Pixelate OLED chandelier, which uses Philips panels. And finally we have a modular OLED luminar announced by Philips in 2014. As far as we know, it was never released commercially. Here we have BlackBody's beautiful bell floor lamps, which use circular OLEDs produced by BlackBody themselves. This large desk lamp uses eight Philips LumiBlade panels, and this is a prototype luminal by Osram that uses the company's transparent OLEDs, which are not sold commercially yet. And finally, we have Philips Huge Living Sculpture 3D Installation, which is a kinetic modular system. I've seen it at Philips Aachen showroom, and it is quite amazing. This spiral chandelier uses 22 OLEDs made by Philips. Here's another Philips lamp. This one was installed at Deutsche Bank's Berlin office. It uses 24 frames, each with 16 OLED panels for a total of 2.4 square meters of active area. It was designed by Cardoff's lighting design firm. And the final lamp is Blackbody's special eye range chandelier. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Goodbye.